Say hello to everybody. Hey, girls. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you believe in love? Because I got something to tell you. <laughs> yeah, we said. Cool. Well, on the topic of New York, welcome, a belated welcome back to New York. Thank you. Very good. Very I know you're glad busy, to be here. But you're glad to be here, right? Yes, I am. Yeah. Because you love it, and let me just say that for I all of <laughs> New Yorkers, how much we love. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Your knee, your yeah. knee is. Mine. Oh, oh should I put my leg down too? No, you're fine. It's oh. just John. Sorry. I just have to work my Gucci shoes into <laughs> yeah, the exactly. shot, okay? <laughs> then they'll let me cape them. <laughs> Gucci. <That's> the <laughs> It's my March <laughs> cowboy shirt. That's oh, how I feel about my March. You got dressed up, I see. <laughs> Sorry. It's, do you always... What? Does this what? look like a slob? Um, I'm sorry. Are you going to be... I don't know. Are you going to do a guest appearance on that 70s show? <laughs> Whatever. I, actually, like, I could do a guest like, appearance on that 70s show. I'm a, I'm you need some... I'm you a need to have albums a, behind. You right? need a blowout. You need a... You need a okay, no, you I need a, <laughs> Have you ever blown dry your hair? They're totally rolling on this, too, and I'm going to get killed, oh. like, on the DV. So, we, do we have secrets? Secrets among friends? <laughs> You're gonna Just be cognizant of your leg going to the... Be cognizant leg. of your leg. Well, can I cross my leg, then? Yeah, if your leg's yeah. like that. I don't think he knows what cognizant means. Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> he taught me that right? <laughs> He knows that. Now she give me... <laughs> All right. So I so now I, I complicated. Like, you feel like yeah, self-conscious about your clothes. Mm -hmm. You're not dressed like a slob. It's just not... It's cute. It's, it's Western. Two records ago. Exactly. Where, <laughs> yeah. Two albums ago. Almost, I guess, 15 <laughs> years ago now, I went to um, a club called Shelter here, oh. and it was the uh, movie release party for Truth or Dare. Oh. And um, I think you were there with uh, Jose and Lewis or some of the dancers. Whatever, yes, and you yeah. like waved me over and told me you liked what I was wearing. Probably more than you like what I'm wearing. Oh, you today, were probably wearing that shirt. That's why it's so faded. I, was, uh, I think I'm a little more dressed <laughs> up actually than this. <laughs> but um, anyway, I want. Obviously, a lot of people are gonna people who remember Truth or Dare are gonna do the A B comparison. How do you think? I don't know when the last time you even watched Truth or Dare was, but how do you think the two films compare? Um. I think they're both as equally as entertaining and both as as provocative. A lot of RF hits over that. If I could get that again, I'm sorry. Oh, what? Oh, sorry. Um, um, audio problem. hits. He wants me to ask the question again about to the dare. But okay. So, <laughs> um, Terribly nerve-wracking, those people. <laughs> okay. Um, how how do you think Truth or Dare and and the new and the new film compare? I think it's just as good if not better yeah. i'm going to tell you a secret i think it's very funny i think it's very emotional very thought-provoking i think all the concert footage is very well shot and very exciting and i don't know about you but i when i watch it i feel like i'm there yeah so well, i i totally enjoyed it i had a lot of fun i think it's mm -hmm. but i think that would you agree that it's a i mean it's, it it seems like a different kind of tour, a different kind of backstage vibe, a different you, a different... Well, it is a different me. Yeah. It's a different me. I have a family. Mm -hmm. I have a husband. I mean, my whole life has changed. So it would be pretty strange if I was behaving exactly the same way I did 12 years ago. I would say. I would be a little freaky. So, <laughs> no more Evian bottles. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, yeah, and I mean, in a lot of ways, the, I, you know, I was telling Liz the other day, I think the dancers seemed like different kinds of people. I think back... The Blind Ambition dancers, they, there was certain, you know, a lot of them wanted to be stars in their own right, I yes. think it's safe to say. Yeah. Um, these Divas. ones seem younger, a little bit more, I don't know, I mean, they seem to have picked up on some of the well, spirituality that you seem to... I, I think one of the big differences in the movie is in Truth or Dare, I didn't have a family, so I spent more time right. with the dancers, and I did a lot of goofy, crazy, mischievous things with them, and they were my only family. And in this film, I have my family, right. my children, my husband, and I have the people, my family that I'm working with on the road. And so it's a juggling act and I do less stuff with them, but in I was- In fact, you acknowledged that at one point. In the yeah, film, and I cry. I spent more time yeah. with you guys. Because I love them and I grew to love them. And you know, when you go through that kind of an experience with people, you, it's very hard to let go of them. Mm -hmm. so. Well, speaking of the real family, um, <laughs> I think 
one of the most exciting things for a lot of people is going to be that actually the first time they get to hear the kids speak and they're just <laughs> amazing and thank you i mean I yeah. was just like, I, everyone who I know who's seen the film sees Lola and is like, wow, she is, at, at this age, she's this beautiful and articulate mm -hmm. and poised mm -hmm. and together. What's she going to be at 20? I just, I, I, she's going to be a nun. <laughs> <laughs> a nun? Oh, okay. No, but see, we'll see now. Didn't now work on you. So I'm hoping my children replace the, um, the dancers ah. in, the, in the film in terms of scene stealing. Right. Right. So I think my son did, pretty they, much does that. I, he does. He definitely does. Yeah. He's he's a character. Mm -hmm. um, so no reluctance to to have them on because I, I remember yes, we. Yes, I, I I was reluctant yeah. and, and for a long time I didn't want to make the film because if I didn't film part of my family somewhere then it wouldn't have been true that mm -hmm. it would have been a lie to make a documentary and not include my family. On the other hand, how much do I show? I didn't want to exploit them anyway. Sure. I didn't. Um, I ended up the the. All the segments that were filmed with my children was filmed by a, a friend of the family, so wow. it was everybody was very comfortable and honestly they don't they were they didn't even know he was there. They just sort of behaved as like they normally do. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Have they seen the film now? No. Are they gonna see it or when they grow up? Yeah. <laughs> they haven't seen True yeah. the Dare, I take it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, because I remember back during Ray of Light time when, when I think we had some footage of, of the, and you were in the studio, I think, and Lola wasn't just a baby then, and, and it was, and there was, you know, you were like, please, you know, you guys, leave don't her alone. do that, yeah. uh, leave yeah. that alone, you know. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, it's a, it's a fine line to walk. Are they, is, is she at the point at all where she's like, are you getting the sense that she, music is in her future, or dance, or? Definitely anything? dance, she's a, she's a. A, da a ballet dancer, mm -hmm. and uh, she's in the Nutcracker this year cool. in, in London. So she's very keen on dancing. Cool. Yeah. Um, and on the other end of the family thing, your dad makes a return appearance yeah. in the film, which was great to see him again. Yeah, he's cool. And you know, all of us who remember Truth or Dare also remember, you know, his impressions of the Blonde Ambition show, <laughs> compared to where he says here, yeah. I actually, and you know, the cabal elements and the mm -hmm. spirituality in this show, he actually seems to. His, accept his, it. Yeah, yeah, accept it. And yeah. has this brought you closer together? Yeah, well, I think we've got, gotten closer, grown closer since, since Truth or Dare, you know. Yeah. I think he's been, become much more accepting, and I've become much more accepting and less judgmental of my father and our differences. Right. So, yeah. There's a point in the film where you really acknowledge that, you know, he did not have an easy time raising all you kids. Yeah, and, and it took me a long time to have appreciation for that. Right. So... But I mean, you and Christopher and Melanie, you grew up, have, I think a lot of people would say that the reason, a large part of the reason that you are who you are and where you are today mm -hmm. is that you had to fend for yourself and do for yourself. And Absolutely. you had that work ethic. Yeah. I don't Rocco really. and Lola are growing up in a very different kind of world. How do you, how do they grow up with that same sense of, you know, applying yourself and working and... Well, you know? I try to make them, I mean, I give them responsibilities and I try not to spoil them. Um... I don't know. I mean, it is it is a challenge. Mm -hmm. They do have a lot, but um, I don't know. I mean, I, what I what I mostly try to do is is um, relate to them um, how little how 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 the trappings of fame and fortune and and are, are not anywhere near as as important as the way that we treat one another. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I hope that that comes across to them, and I mm -hmm. hope that they get that sense. Mm -hmm. That that notion and that and that message is also throughout the film, and I mm -hmm. know it, from whether you whether it's expressed in terms of the light or mm -hmm. um, just the fact that we reap what we sow. And I've always mm -hmm. wanted to ask you that. I mean, this is not a um, an idea that's unique to Kabbalah, right. right? No. So I mean, it's not it's not like necessarily when you're hoping people get this mm -hmm. that you're saying study Kabbalah. Go no, and, you know, absolutely not. You know. No, I'm sharing what I know with other people. I mean, right. you know, if it, if it, if you connect to it, fine. If you don't, fine. Yeah. So, as you are, as you know, I mean, you probably more than any artist I can think of in the world has the kind of fans to this day who, you know, if you painted your face bright blue, you'd mm -hmm. see a blue man group in your in your at your <laughs> concerts. You know, mm -hmm. um, they sort of. Do what you do, and I, do you, are you concerned that that you know people may have sort of latched onto Gabala because oh she's doing it, and, and for maybe 
I don't know, the Possibly. wrong reasons or? Yeah, but, you know, like anything, you know, you could, you know, say you want to play the violin because I play the violin, but unless you're really serious about it, you're not going to stick with it. So mm. I'm not worried about it. I mean, right. it, it is, it's like, it's a serious study and um, if you're doing it for fun, you won't do it for very long. There's a point in the film where you talk about um, spirituality mm -hmm. being, I, there, you know, politics doesn't, ho I don't, I, there's no hope in politics, but there is the spirituality. Well, I didn't say there's no hope. They're just like, if you want to change the world, ultimately, you know, how much can you do politically? Because politics go with whichever way the wind, wind blows. And the nature of politics is that ultimately you have to serve something, right? So you can't always be truthful, be honest, or, you know, take care of people. Is, is, um, is the fact that there was some degree of controversy with American life and the fact that people perceive, you know, in the, the initial video, something you wanted to stay away from this time? No, 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 I did, and, and it didn't really have anything to do with that. I just see that, you know, you know, historically, you get rid of one despot and another one's going to pop up in its place eventually, you know what I mean? I mean, so how much can you do to, to make the world a better place with politics, Yeah. right? And you, in and, and the film also... I mean, you don't have to agree with me. That's my well, opinion. I, I mean, I just, as, the older I get, the m I, I find myself getting more politically oriented, actually. Yeah, but also, don't you feel like that it's f really finite what you can do? Yeah, yeah. I just, I feel like I... I mean, sooner or later, things. everybody, you know, like even, you know, Carrie or, you know, like somebody you want to, you, you know, in the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, you always have to, you know morph and change your views to, ser to serve people, to serve, you know, the greater good. And so mm -hmm. it's not always um, what's best in, in the bigger picture. You know what I mean? Somebody always gets hurt or something gets screwed over or, you know, the environment gets destroyed because of the oil companies, et cetera, et cetera. So, so can, you know, it's hard to see that politics are ultimately our, you know, saving grace. And you make a distinction always but I, but I would also like to say that, you know, you do have to get involved in the community around you. And it is, there is a way you, you can use politics to make a change. I just don't think in the bigger picture it's going to change everything. Um, you, you also make a distinction between spirituality and religion, per se. I mean, the, the, yeah. the show, I mean, the reinvention show, it, it, you took, it was about sort of, there was a section of it where it was about stripping away the, the things that identify us with one religion or another and, yeah. and in turn s sort of divide us or separate us. Right. Um, and you see that in the film. Right. Well, yeah, I would make a distinction between spirituality and religion. I, I don't, I mean, I do believe that to, uh, you know, to a large degree, religion does separate people. You know, this is my group. If you're not in this group, you know what I mean? I'm better than you, et cetera, et cetera. And there's a lot of discrimination that goes on in the world because of it. And I'm, you know, I'm a big fan of being spiritual. I'm not a big fan of being religious right. in that kind of um, elitist way. Um, I guess, I'm, in fact, I'm sure one of the sections of the film that a lot of people are going to focus on and pay attention mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. is the last, I guess, probably 15 minutes where you go to Israel. Uh -huh. Um, can you talk about why you wanted to include that in it and the fact that it sort of, well, like chron chronologically, it came after the tour ended, mm -hmm. but... Um, well, uh, originally I was supposed to play in Israel. Right. And then the shows got canceled because people were afraid, oh, you know, it's too dangerous, it's too scary. And I, so I always had intended to go there. And then I guess I was just, I was really miffed ultimately because I wanted to go there and put on a show, and especially a show that was about bringing people together. So I included it because I feel I wanted to show that, you know, life does go on after the tour, A, and B, this is also part of what I do. Um, and going there to, I mean, my main goal when I went there was to, um, was to give a speech to a very large group of um, influential people um, in Tel Aviv um, about uh, this or organization called Spirituality for Kids, which is about bringing kids together. Um, and, you know, specific Israel, it was about bringing Palestinian and Israeli kids together and them learning together. And I don't know, I think it was really important 
to show that aspect and to put my money where my mouth is because all during the show, I'm all during the film. I was saying, I love New York, uh, and and obviously you do too because yes. there's a song on the album yeah. uh, called that. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Are the people? Are your friends in London and LA going to like take offense to this? Or that's cool. That's okay if they do. I mean, can't I love New York the best? Sure. There's, not, there's enough room in my heart for other cities, and you know, there's also a bit of irony in the song. Yeah. Yeah, irony. Irony. You know what that means, I know. Right? I know what it means. <laughs> okay. Um, and door. I think it's the first pop song I, I at least I know of, to use the word dork. Pop, I, pop, it could be a yeah. first. I actually wrote the song when I was on tour last year, and I was in New York, and I was having such a great time and loving the energy of being here and feeling like I just stuck my finger in an electric socket. So uh -huh. that's really why I was inspired to write the song. Well, let me, let me ask you about the album just overall and the fact that um, I think there was some, although pleasantly surprised, a lot of surprise um, about the fact that this is a wall-to-wall -wall dance record. I mean, it's probably the most dance-oriented record you've done ever. And um, any reason you guys decided to go in that direction? Um, we didn't start out that way. I think Stuart, I, I worked with Mirwiz on some songs and I worked with Stuart on some songs and I just uh, tried several different things. And when, when Stuart brought me the music to Hung Up and I wrote the, uh, the lyrics very quickly and it was like instant divine inspiration. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it just clicked and I thought, okay, this is the direction of my record. I want to make a dance record. Was it all written pretty quickly? Um, a lot of the songs were, but I had written stuff as I was on, on the road as well. Stuart and I had been collaborating while we were on tour, and we took a lot of that stuff that we did and morphed them into songs. You find time even when you're on the road and with the... Sound checks, backstage, else, yeah. after, in between sound checks and the show, and uh -huh. yeah, stuck in hotel rooms, right, right. in boring cities, there's not that many. Right. New York's not one of them, but right. yeah. Los Angeles, however, is for people to sleep, as this song goes. Yes, well, <laughs> yes. It's poetry. Uh, right. Don't take it literal. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, I get these things. Do I you get live these in L.A.? Concepts. No, no, uh-uh. Oh. No, okay. visit there. You said that Asia. very emphatically. Oh, no, <laughs> no, no. Okay. Um, is, is, um, American Life did enjoy success in the clubs, and I wonder, is that part of why you wanted to go so dance-oriented with this? Um, no, I mean, when I wrote American Life, I was very, very agitated by what was going on in the world around me and I, I felt like I had to get a lot off my chest. I think I was angry and, um, and I, was, I made a lot of political statements and I, felt, I feel now, you know, when I, when I wrote this, this new record, I just, I just want to have fun. I want to dance. I want to feel um, buoyant and I want to give other people that same feeling because there's a lot of madness going on in the world around us, and I, I, just, I just want people to be happy. So. It, really, it really does move. I mean, it starts and just doesn't yeah. let up till yeah. the end. And, and that's, that's what we intended. Yeah. Just wanted to make a record that you put on and from, you know, at a party, in your car, whatever, and you don't have to skip past a ballad or, mm -hmm. you know, you can just play it for and have nonstop dance music for an hour. And yeah. as danceable as it is, though, lyrically, you are... I mean, um, Bearing my soul. How high? Or there's going Ergo, back to the same confessions on a dance floor. Is well, it that coming would be the confession is part. It con oh, right. Is it coming together? <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Man, <laughs> this is brutal. Um, okay, <laughs> gotcha. So, that, yes. So, but lyrically, you are, just so people know, I mean, you are touching on some of the stuff that you did in American Life. You know, what sort of, you know, I've achieved this. You know, what else is there? Uh -huh. know, yeah. What more is there? Kind what's, of thing. what's, what's more, what, what's, what? Uh, what's behind the uh, the curtain? Yeah, so exactly. so to speak. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I continue to ask questions, but I I'm hoping that there's a sense of hope and happiness in the record as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the um, having a, s a really dance oriented record, club oriented record, especially in this country, mm -hmm. that mean well that translates to dancing to a great well to a, to a large extent gay community. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, because I, I sense a perception among some in the gay community that there may, compared to 10, 15 years ago, that, that you may put some distance between yourself and that community in the recent years. Well, not intentionally. So? No. No. 
just a function of well, I'd, I'd, life or I don't know. No? I'm, I'm not. I, I can't speak for those people, but I've certainly heard that. But, you know, mm -hmm. is, is she, does she care about us anymore kind of thing? Of course I do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very uh, appreciative and grateful to um, my fan base that's been so loyal to me in the gay community. Right. So, yeah. Is there going to be a tour, you think? I hope so. There's yeah. a rumor. <laughs> because I thought you said earlier this year, I'm going out next summer. I'm go Summer 2000. I just said I hope so. What do you want? Well, now it's, I hope so. It's kind of backing I'd off from there will be one. Okay, I'm just, I'm not. <laughs> can't I be serious? Do yes. I have to, just every, just of course, have to have answers about everything? All right. Yes. Excuse me. Do you want to ask her about the video and the single? Because you don't have too much time left. Don't sure. leave out the video and the single, John. Yes. Yeah, so I, I do want to ask you about it. So Hung Up is the first single. Yeah. Um, talk to me a little bit about that song, and um, was it one of the... <laughs> <laughs> what? Was it, was it one of the first ones that you guys came up with for the record? And it... Oh, yeah, it was one of the first songs. Actually, we wrote it because I was working on music for a musical, and I thought, oh, there's like a disco section in the movie, and then... So we wrote it for that, and then I decided not to do the movie, and, you know, that, that was the, um, the clincher. That's how it all started, yeah. Uh -huh. Is this movie going to research? Let's go disco. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. And then we proceeded to listen to all old disco records, Giorgio Moroder and Cironi and ABBA, 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 that's all we ever played. Which, and just gimme, lots gimme, of gimme inspiration. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, there's a bit of I Feel Love, speaking of Giorgio Moroder. Yeah. Marauder, Donna right? Summer. Right. Yep. Paying and tribute. Other, other, um, other songs worked in there at all? Oh, the Bee Gees. I mean, no, I mean, just, we just soaked it all in and, you know, hopefully mm -hmm. we transmogrified it into something. That's another word you probably don't know. The, the you know, cognizant. All, all, of, the, all of the above <laughs> do I know. Because you don't like my shirt. Okay. okay. Yes. And the video so, for, for Hung Up. Yeah. Um, shot in London. Um, shot in London, uh, Paris, and Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. A trip around the world, capturing hopefully lots of different subcultures of dance. It's really a tribute to dance, mm -hmm. and John Travolta. Yeah. You yeah. say at one point in the film, by the way, I'm <laughs> glad I'm. I think you turn to Jamie and you say, "I'm glad I'm not a dancer anymore during yeah. the auditions." Yeah. Um, but obviously, it's horrible to have to cut them, and I know what it feels like to like yeah. dance your heart out and to have everybody go, "Thanks, here, <laughs> yeah, you can leave now." Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. All right. Um, but obviously, you have a love and appreciation for them because oh, this yeah. record is just. You know. And we have the best, most amazing dancers in the video. Uh huh. So I'm very excited who, about who, it. How did you find them? And well, Cloud from the movie, mm -hmm, sure. he's in it, and a, a few of the dancers from the movie are in it: Miran and Aries, and then the rest of them. We had auditions in L.A. and London and Paris. So. If there, I mean, if. You know, um, people thought you put them through their paces last time. If there's a tour with this record, I can't imagine. It's going to be like oxygen uh, tanks off stage, Exactly, right? yeah. <laughs> you want to audition? Uh, yeah, well, I don't think you want to see me audition, but... No? I could do wardrobe, however. You could? <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, um, I, w w when I do want to ask you f one final thing. There's a, w actually, the final track on the, on the album is... Um, is has a lyric that's that says essentially this is who I am you can like it or not love me or leave me because I'm never gonna stop and God that's poetry but it's all <laughs> well, poetry or not it's it's um, <laughs> it's kind of been your your credo for a long time uh -huh. you know, take it or leave it this is who I am mm -hmm. you know and it and yet I think the movie you also kind of you make an attempt in there to, to say I know that people think that maybe I've just gone off the deep end, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, Cuckoo. not case, yeah. you know, with, with all this, yeah. this cult or whatever it is they yeah. think it is I've gotten into. Is, do you care that people sort of get where you're at now in life, or is it like, hey, if you don't, you don't? I care, but I'm not going to lose sleep over it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do. I, I hope that I reach people or I inspire people, and, but, you know, not everybody's going to agree with my point of view, and... They shouldn't. That's what makes the world go around. More, more, um, more uh, singles and remixes in mind from the record. Oh can yes, very can many. We, can we say, I think "Sorry" is the next. Yeah, right? yeah. 
Okay. And Stuart's work made actually Stuart's done some amazing remixes for Sorry, Hung Up, Let It Will Be. Oh, he did a killer remix for that. Let It Will Be is a great one. And, and I Love New York. Uh huh. Yeah. Do you, yeah. And I, I don't know if you your favorites change, but do you have a current favorite track on the record or? I love New York. Yeah. I'm not just saying that, okay? <laughs> just for me. No, I people. just love it. It's just, I can't wait to do it live. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to throw my hair around a lot during the song. <laughs> you need to <laughs> customize the, bring back those old logo t-shirts, the, the I Heart New York yeah. things, I think. Okay, thanks know? for the idea. See, that's my we first send you one suggestion. Yeah. See, little evidence. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You can talk to Siobhan. <laughs> Thank, and you. Thank you so much. Maybe we can oh. work you in. <laughs> There are some club dates coming up, right? Uh, in London, at least. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, I think I'm playing at Camden Palace, which is a place I played right. like a hundred years ago. Right. Yeah. And there could be something here in New York that you love so much. Be glad you know. I'm not going to say anything. All right. Shh. <laughs> well, great to see you as always. Nice to see you. I'm going to have some of my people send you some clothes. Okay, thank you All so right. much. And I was, <laughs> I thought you'd have been happy with this. No, I, know. I am happy. Yeah. Just, it's, you know, giving me something to rip you about, so. <laughs> Well, best of luck. I hope to we'll see you soon. Thank you. Take care. We will. Good to see you. Okay. That's great. Should I, um, disrobe? I mean, take my battery pack off? <laughs>